Hello! Welcome back for the second installment of the series Grip Notes. Um, as I promised you before, I was going to get into more detail as to what exactly uh, the Grip Department does. And in today's topic, we're going to look at the different positions within the Grip Department. So, as I described before, uh, once the producers have hired a director and the director has hired a cinematographer, then the cinematographer is going to need to hire a camera crew and a lighting crew. So uh, on the camera end, you know, he's got his operators and his operators are going to find the focus pullers and the camera assistants that are going to help them with the camera gear. And then uh, the cinematographer is also going to be getting in touch with a gaffer who will be in charge of the light equipment, uh, stuff that needs to be plugged in. And then uh, the next call that goes out is to the key grip. Uh, who's going to be in charge of camera movement and shaping light, essentially, and a multitude of other things, as I said before. So the cinematographer calls up the key grip, and then the key grip, after uh, he says, yeah, look, I'd love to work with you, uh, says, uh, let me make a few phone calls, and the first call that I make is to the best boy. Once again, best boy, not gender specific. Uh, this comes from an old studio system when only men were working in studios. Uh, that's changed. There are quite a few really good best boys that are girls because, quite frankly, uh, best boy is it's it's a it's a different kind of a grip position. It doesn't require as much physical labor. It's uh, it's more of a thoughtful place. Um, there's a lot of accountability involved. There's a lot of clerical work involved. Uh, you're dealing with the accountants. You're dealing with the producers, with the uh, production managers and line producers. And what you're trying to do is make sure that everything's accounted for, that you have all the equipment and the manpower and uh, the expendables, everything that you need on a day-to-day -day basis to ensure that we get what we need to get the job done. So um, Best Boy, very important position, very unique, uh, integral workings with the production departments um, and you know, the, the accountability, basically, of the entire grip department. So. After I get off the phone with the best boy, usually the best boy is going to be on the phone calling up uh, the grips that he's going to need or she's going to need to do the prep work, which, as I've said before, it's best to have a couple of weeks to do prep on any project because you're only going to do the project better if you've had time to ask everyone all the questions you need uh, and have the departmental meetings and so forth to ensure that the dress rehearsal is well and done and that what you're about to do, uh, once you commit to having actors on set and spending you know, $10,000 per minute, depending on the show, uh, that you're going to know how it's going to go. And so Best Boy is going to need to load a truck, uh, also get re uh, ready to, to bring in all of the manpower we're going to need, uh, have the expendables and the, the different um, specialty items built and ready to go. So uh, usually a couple weeks worth of prep, prep, but we've actually done this uh, within three days, and I hate to admit that because uh, it's not a good way to go. You aren't going to be as efficient uh, rushing the prep time. Uh, the more prep time you have, the smoother things are going to go. So Best Boy's uh, starting to get together the lists of the equipment we're going to need and the expendables and calling the vendors and working with the UPM and the line producer to try and uh, see whether or not the money really is there to do what the DP and the director want to make the film look good. And after I hang up uh, with the best boy, and I'm really glad to have uh, that person on board, the next call I'll usually make is uh, to the um, rigging key. And the rigging key, uh, not always available because production's like, well, we don't really have that much stuff. You know, in most cases, it's good to have a rigging department uh, because the rigging grips are the ones that help the art department get their vision done, uh, hanging things that uh, are very heavy, curtain tracks and uh, back, backdrops and uh, chandeliers and, you know, I mean, depending on the scope of the project, it's a good idea to have a rigging crew in place, especially at least a rigging key and a best boy and two is a good rigging crew. It's just going to make things run smoother. And what the rigging key is going to do is get together with myself and the gaffer and the cinematographer and go over the blueprints about what the stage looks like, if we have any location uh, situations that we're going to need specialty things done there, um, 
the rig and key usually goes on the scouts with me to ensure that uh, whatever we're going to plan on location is going to go smooth. There's going to be uh, condors that need to be rigged and, um, you know, entire auditoriums that need to be lit up and movie theaters and, you know, whatever it is, whatever the locations are, uh, the rig and key and I and the gaffer and the cinematographer all work together to try and figure out what equipment we need for that. Now, if I've got a rig and key in place, uh, now I know I can walk away and concentrate back on uh, the shooting aspects of the film and all the prep work is going to be handled by the rig and key. Otherwise, sometimes the best boy has to do that and uh, that just stretches the best boy thin. But again, we've done it and, uh, you know, producers go, well, it worked out fine. And it's like, yeah, I lost my best boy because he'll never work with me again, but oh well. Um, <laughs> I've got great stories to tell about that. Actually, we've gotten best boys back once the uh, production understands, you know, we miss them. Uh, really good best boys are good to find. Good rigging grips are good to find. A good grip is good to find. So now I've got my best boy and my rigging key in place. And I know that my best boy is bringing on some really good grips and my rigging key is bringing on some really good rigging grips. And I'm like, wow, this is going to be a great show. Uh, but I better get some dolly grips uh, because uh, that's a very integral part to what things look like. Dolly grips are the only grips that have their work actually on camera. Anytime you see a camera moving, uh, you have a dolly grip or a crane operator that's part of the grip department that is moving that camera. Cameras do not move without grips very often. Even when the cameraman is in handheld mode, uh, the operator is very much relying on the fact that a grip is his uh, set of eyes and is going to make sure that he doesn't walk off a cliff while he's operating the camera. So there's always a good grip behind a good operator. And so uh, I call the operators most of the time when I'm starting a show and say, you know, I like uh, knowing whether or not an operator has a particular dolly grip that they really like to be with because the hours are long and, uh, you know, you can go into the middle of the night and 18 hours a day and whatever. Uh, it's good to be with somebody that you get along with, that you understand, that you care about. And so if there's a camaraderie, uh, I'll ask the operator to bring in their dolly grip. Um, because I know that that will be done. I don't have to worry about whether or not they're having fun and getting along and uh, being strong in the work they're doing. Um, the operator is going to have someone there that they know. Now, if in fact the operator's like, ah, I don't really care, then uh, I'll bring in a dolly grip. And I know some of the best in the business, I'm glad to say. And um, I'll have them come and join me. Uh, sadly, I've lost quite a few of my really good dolly grips this way because uh, once an operator gets a hold of a good dolly grip, I mean, if you're a camera operator and someone is moving that camera around and that's part of the camera operation, obviously it's good to have uh, someone that you love and that worked well with you right there. And it's a brotherhood. Um, when you start working well within the departments that way, um, the results are incredible. I mean, it's, it's telepathy. Um, and as I said before, Crane and Dolly, very specific. Um, watching them when you're off to the sidelines, if you've ever seen a camera crew working and you notice there's somebody pushing around a Dolly on the floor or on a track, uh, uh, sometimes they can make that look really easy, but it's because they know what they're doing. So we'll have a segment just dedicated for Dolly and Crane. Um, so now, basically everything's in place. We've got uh, the shooting crew, which is the key grip, best boy, the Dolly grips, you should always have a dolly grip per camera, uh, especially, you know, I mean, if you have more than one camera, you probably need more than one dolly. Therefore, you need uh, as many dollies as there are, I mean, as many dolly grips as there are dollies. And, uh, you know, on days when they bring in another camera, uh, I always ask, I'm like, do you need another dolly? Because it just makes the camera department move faster if they have that opportunity. And most camera operators will tell you, I, I really like to be on a dolly. Um, it's, you can do it on, on sticks, you know, they did it for years, but uh, it just it moves a lot faster. You can get a lot more specific and get better shots. It's better to get a dolly. So that will probably do it for this segment of uh, Grip Notes. And I'm really glad you took the time to join me. I hope I've been informative. 
If you have any questions or you have any suggestions for future uh, segments, please email me at uh, infinitygrips at gmail.com. You'll see that right there in the annotation. Um, and I'm looking forward to seeing you on the next segment of Grip Notes. So we'll see you soon.